Hey, welcome to this week's assignment review. This week it's all about the budgets. So I want to review a few things this week, um, just like every week. First of all, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, all assignments throughout the entire course need to be submitted in Blackboard. I will be uh, providing the assignments to you through Blackboard and you need to submit all assignments in Blackboard. You will have work and study and content in the online course, but all of your points uh, that count for your grade go in Blackboard. And all assignments are due at Tuesday at 10 a.m. Tuesdays. So uh, if you're late on an assignment, uh, you will see that you get a zero if you don't turn in an assignment. If you turn it in late after 10 a.m. on Tuesday, you'll receive one point. That's really just one point so that I can see that you actually did the assignment. Remember, you have 200 points uh, available for class participation. Part of that means you're doing your assignments, you're keeping up, uh, and you're following the scope and sequence of the course as we build a, comprehen a comprehensive financial plan for you and your financial planning portal. We're going to talk about that in this week's assignment review, uh, your financial planning portal. So we'll introduce that this week, week two. Uh, early assignments, if you haven't got the message, you should have all received notification through Blackboard. Now remember, in order to get the 10 points, the extra 10 points for turning your assignment in early, it needs to be turned in Friday at 3 p.m. That's when the market closes, and my job as an investment advisor includes managing investments, so I need to be paying attention to the market, especially on Fridays, especially during times of volatility. So please just know that uh, when you turn in your assignment in early on Friday by 3 p.m., a couple of things happen. One is it goes into my queue, which gives me the ability to grade it and return it to you as soon as possible. Now, what happens is I give you the extra 10 points or I may give you a comment and deduct some points. It doesn't really matter if you turn it in early, Friday at 3 p.m., and I re review it, which I will do, my commitment to you is I will review your assignment if you turn it in early so that you can get it back and make any corrections you might need to make by Tuesday at 10 a.m. So if you make corrections and resubmit it, you will get the, the 10 points extra if you just make the corrections correctly. So that's a benefit. You're getting extra points. You get an opportunity to correct it. You get feedback. You know your grade right away. On the other hand, if you want to wait until the last minute, that is your prerogative. If you're too busy, I totally get that. However, I'm not committing to grading your assignments uh, in a in an urgent way because if you wait until the last minute it goes at the bottom of the stack so <clears throat> I hope that helps I hope you like that idea it's been popular throughout the course students get extra points and the big idea here the big idea for the extra points is that you're going to earn your 950 points which gives you an A you will earn those points early in the semester so that at the end of the semester you'll be able to focus on the other courses that you have that include final exams we don't have a final exam we have a capstone and so you'll have all of your work done in this course and you will have earned sufficient points to get your A, 950 points, you'll earn those early if you turn your assignments in early. So hope that helps. Moving on. So this week is all about the budgets. Uh, we have three types of budgets typically that I want you to be familiar with. A zero-based budget, you need to understand how that works, what it is, and it could be a very effective tool for you. The other is the envelope system. Dave Ramsey made this popular, and it basically is for people who use cash and you actually manage the cash in envelopes, and you give each envelope a name, a category, and that's how you manage your budget. My favorite is the automated budget. Now, I know this is a little controversial for some students who do not feel comfortable giving their data to uh, me or Bayrock or Mint.com. But the, the truth is your data is already at the bank. And so the, the tool that I'm going to recommend this week in this assignment is optional. Okay. 
I need to jump in right now and I'm making an edit to update the assignment uh, to the budget assignment. So in the past, I've always been very excited to tell you about what's possible when you use the Bayrock financial planning portal to create your financial plan. And one of the really helpful, I think helpful premium tools in that portal is the ability to link your accounts or aggregate your accounts. However, <clears throat> for reasons I'm not going to go into in this update I'm just going to tell you uh, this is an important announcement you will not be requested or required to link your accounts in Bayrock it would be like cheating if you had the if you had access to that powerful tool that allowed you to link your accounts in the Bayrock planning portal. This is a premium feature for paying customers. And since you are paying, um, you certainly have access to that feature and to that function. But it, like I said, it would, it would be like cheating for you to actually use that. And I've received several comments in the past from students who tell me they're just not comfortable linking their accounts and giving that information to me or Bayrock or anyone else and for that reason in fact last semester I received a couple of comments negative comments on my evaluation saying that I tried to get students to link their financial information in my company's tool Bayrock is my company and I am not trying to get you to link your accounts in my company's tool I do not want your I really don't want you to link your accounts because it's just like I said it would it would it would be like cheating for you to have access to that kind of powerful tool inside of your financial plan so I would prefer that you use another tool to create a budget and track your expenses if you decide later on after the semester that you like the Bayrock planning portal and you want to take advantage of our offer to continue using that we will have that conversation and I'll help coach you around how to best use that tool but for now it would be like cheating for you to use that tool it's just it makes things so easy which is what I really wanted to do was make things so easy for you but instead what I did was I created this conflict uh, and so for that reason I'm updating this this assignment as you can see I'm gonna paste this little segment right into this video somewhere right in here and you'll see me come in and make this announcement and then I'll jump back out and I'll probably talk about the benefits of linking your accounts and you can totally disregard that anything you hear me say about linking your accounts should be totally disregarded because again it would be like cheating for you to use that powerful tool for you to use that powerful tool that premium feature uh, that I pay a lot of money for for my clients to be able to link all of their accounts it's like mint.com without the commercials so again whatever you hear this semester about linking your accounts please disregard it you can link your accounts in mint.com for free you should do that it's a great tool but do not do not use the feature the function the tool the premium uh, product that has been included in your package at Bayrock because that would just be like cheating thanks for letting me make this announcement I'll see you in the next video oh I'll see you in this video right now but it involves linking your accounts, your credit cards, your investment accounts, your bank account, your credit union, all of your accounts, just like you would in Mint.com. And when you do that, it kind of automates things for you, including your spending. It keeps track of your spending. So one of the things you have to do this week is identify what tool are you going to use. You may have already done this <clears throat> last week. But if you haven't, I'm looking for you to know what tool you're going to use to track your spending this semester. And so I'm giving you an opportunity to use the, the planning portal, which I'll introduce you to in just a minute.
as a way to keep track of your spending and to help you build a comprehensive financial plan that includes your cash flows. So again, it's optional. Don't get upset thinking I'm looking to get your data. I don't want your data. The tool that I use with my clients and with students is has the same level in, of encryption that banks use. And so it's pretty safe. And in your financial plan, you don't give any personal information other than your birthday. And so if you're concerned about that, make up a name, make up a birthday, just keep it close enough so that you can know that your plan, your fake plan, your imaginary plan is close to your reality. So we'll talk about that more this week and we'll talk about it more next week and the week after because it's all part of your capstone assignment. It's a big part of this semester. <clears throat> so let's uh, look at week two capstone. It's time to get started. So you will have a link in your online course to register and then log in and you're going to want to save your password and also save that browser. You'll notice that even though you may be going to moneystudygroup.com to find and enroll in the course. Once you enroll in the course, you're going to be on a, a page that is skills.munchback.com. That's just where we built the platform. But this week, you're going to log in and register at Right Capital, which is the tool that my company uses to provide financial planning. So you you will have your own portal for financial planning, just like my clients do. And it's a very uh, it's a premium product but I want you to use it this semester and we will work together to build your financial plan. It will be right capital. Uh, it's branded for Bayrock Financial. So just make sure you save the browser and keep the information handy. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create these five data cards. You're gonna complete these five data cards. And so family profile, your income, your savings, your net worth, your expenses, and your goals. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and just open my iPad. And I'm going to go through this process. And I'm going to record it. And I'm going to let you watch it. Maybe I'll put a little music in the background. But it should take about five minutes to do this. We'll see how long it takes. But here we go. So I'll be right back. So that took about five minutes, didn't take long. The first thing I did was family profile. This is really the people that you love, the people that are involved in your life, like your kids, your spouse, and yourself, obviously. So that's uh, how you do that. And notice you can add participants. Next is uh, your income. So uh, that's your salary, your pa any passive income that you might have. You can add those uh 
you can add those data cards and you want to do that for all sources of your income. And remember, if you're a student and you're receiving benefits from your parent, a parent or grandparent or uncle or a scholarship or any other source of income, even though it's not something you earned like a paycheck, you're going to count that as income. So just be thinking of what I want you to think about is the expenses in your life. So the next data card is savings. And we'll talk about expenses in a minute, but savings includes your bank, your credit union, your 401k if you're working and you participate in that. Any sources of, of savings uh, that you've already accumulated, that you've already put in an account, that's those data cards will show up in your financial plan. They will add to your net worth. And so you want to add those uh, to your to your planning portal. And again, you can link these accounts if they're if they're active. So <clears throat> another th now net worth is where you would, as you saw when I did it, you will link uh, accounts there in and net worth. So it's easy to do. It's easy to link the accounts or you can add them manually. It does. You know, it's up to you. Uh, but remember, all of your accounts, if you have accounts, if you have a checking account, a savings account, a credit union account, uh, a CD, all of those accounts, including a credit card, if you have debt on a credit card or a mortgage or whatever, all of those accounts need to be added into your plan. And you can do that manually or you can do that you can by linking the accounts, which gives you a live feed. It's a one-way feed, but it keeps your plan up to date. It's pretty cool, I think. But again, I know how some students feel about it. You are a huge target for fraud, so good on you for not being too uh, easy to link your accounts. But I'm confident that it's very safe. I use it with my clients all the time, so it's there for you. I would use it if you want it to be easy. So the next, uh, I guess, expenses was the next data card. And this is where all of your expenses need to be included. And it's basically how your budget will be developed. So when you put these expenses in, we'll talk about this multiple times throughout the semester. The next thing is your goals. And this is really important. Um, in the course, you're going to basically create some expenses. Like you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a car, you're going to put some imaginary uh, expenditures on a credit card so that I can show you how to manage those things effectively and efficiently to build wealth. But in the meantime, I would like for you to consider what are some of your goals, some of the things that you want your money to do for you. And this is where you put it under goals. So I think that's it for the data cards. Um, now let's talk about your expense categories. Again, I want you to be thinking about not just basic expense categories, but what are the expenses in your life? Okay, so let me make sure you understand that sometimes uh, students are receiving free rent, food, Wi-Fi, insurance, transportation, all of those things, and that's fine. But this semester, what I want you to do is think about the expenses that, that apply to your life. So I want you to think about all of the expenses in your life. And I want you to think about how much does your life cost and consider all of those expenses in your life, whether you're paying them or they're being donated by a parent, a grandparent or a scholarship uh, or any other source, because you will create uh, those expenses, even though you you're not paying them, they need to show up in your budget this semester. For the purpose of this course, you're going to have income, which may just be the value of the rent that your parents are giving you. Okay, that would be a source of income, and you would just you would do a little research and figure out how much would you pay for rent if you were renting a room and you were say there were three people in the house your mom, your dad, and you, and the rent was $1,500 or the mortgage is $1,500, your part would be how much? $500, right. I know you know that. So that's what I'm looking for. That's the way I want you to think about preparing your budget and your expenses throughout the semester and specifically this week.
It'll come in real handy in your capstone assignment. So be thinking about those real life expenses, what you'll spend on food, what you will spend on utilities, what you'll spend on housing, what you'll spend on everything. And remember, these um, these expenses, these expense categories are going to be projected. So I'm going to give you a little heads up right now. We're going to create a plan based on you already graduating. And throughout the semester, I'm going to help you buy a house, buy a car, and see how that financing looks and see all the ways, the strategies that you can use to make those uh, to use your money in the most efficient way possible so that you can build wealth, so that you can achieve the big idea of the course, which is to become a millionaire by the time you're 50. So we're going to be focusing on these categories of expenses, and I want you to be thinking about after you graduate, what will those expenses be? All right, moving right along. Here's what I want you to think about the most. Well, no, this is just what I what we need to be thinking about in terms of the big picture of your financial life is how much will you earn when you graduate? Think about the dream job that you want. How much will you earn? How much will you save? And you don't need to know the answer to these. These are just questions I want you to have top of mind as you think about the idea of managing your money throughout your lifetime. How much will you earn? How much will you save? And I think it's important for you to start to think about how much will you give? I mean, if let's say that you achieve uh, not only your goals, but you achieve more than your goals. Like, what is it you're going to do with your money? And that's part of this, this semester. Something I want you to think about. Some things I want you to think about. Not just what do you want to do with your money, but what do you want to do with your life? And I really want you to think about this semester. What are the small steps, the actual things that you're going to do to make your money count? That's what I'm here to teach you. But you have to do it. You have to take the steps. So uh, here's a quote, my favorite quote. It's actually the first quote in my book, Make Your Money Count. 98% of us will die at some point in our lives. So a little planning goes a long way. Ricky Bobby said that in Talladega Nights. A funny movie. And yeah, that's a good thing for us to think about. 98% of us will die at some point in our life. So here we go. Final comment, final suggestion is, uh, what are you going to use to track your spending this semester? So I've asked for that information. I'm, I've not deducted any points so far, but uh, there will be a time when I'm going to say, hey, tell me what are you going to use? You may have to repeat it a couple times this semester, but I want you to know what tool are you going to use to track your spending? At the end of the semester, we're going to have an assignment which will require you to supply all of your data. And I need, I, you got to be accountable for everything you spent. So if you're using a debit card at a bank, Bank of America, Chase, whatever, that's all in the app. It's all there to download. And that's one of three parts of the assignment that you're going to need is the data. Number two, just so that you're accountable, so that you know where the data is. But number two is I want you to take that, those transactions and categorize them and create a chart so you have a visual representation of where you spent money throughout this semester by category. So that'll be helpful for you to see where you're spending your money. And number three, the most important part of the assignment is for you just to think about and communicate what did you learn about yourself this semester and the way that you spend money. So that assignment comes at the end of the semester, but it starts now because you have to be tracking your expenses now in order for you to uh, have that data at the end of the semester to get the full points for this assignment. So I think that's it. Uh, That's it for the slideshow. Uh, Oh, yeah, and that's this week's class collaboration. So you should... Grab a screenshot. You can post that anywhere you want. Where are you? What are you going to use? So it's kind of fun to see how students are thinking about tracking their spending. Say whatever you want. Uh, You can say how you don't want to link your cards because you don't trust the system. That's fine. But then tell me what are you going to use? And then post that somewhere public. uh, And Money Study Group is not really public. You can post it there. You can post it on our YouTube. This is 
most of these videos get live streamed on YouTube and Facebook. 